the James Webb Telescope made another important discovery. But for some reason it was deprived of attention. In the meantime, this discovery is extremely important for understanding the evolution of the universe. And this discovery has raised some awkward questions. And we'll talk about this in this video. Until recently, it was believed that in the distant past, in the early universe, there were a lot of galaxies with active nuclei and galaxies with powerful jets, or simply quasars. And this state of things fit perfectly into the Big Bang paradigm. According to which, at the beginning of the life of our universe, rapid processes of star formation and rapid growth of the mass of supermassive black holes took place. Because active star formation is accompanied by high radiation intensity. And according to the accretion disk model, the absorption of matter by a black hole is accompanied by an intense release of matter in the jets. In addition, in images from previous telescopes, the proportion of these bright active galaxies increases with distance. And this hinted to us that very active processes in the very early universe occurred in all galaxies without exception. And this is logical. Because this is the time, in the Big Bang Theory it is considered the moment when the first stars were lit and the first galaxies formed. Thus, these bright galaxies in the early universe support the Big Bang Theory. But it seems that this is not entirely true. Or even not true at all. The fact is that our previous telescopes, in the early universe, saw only bright objects. Moreover, the farther the galaxy is from us, the greater its brightness must be for us to see it. But contrary to our expectations, the James Webb Telescope did not find many of these bright, active galaxies in the very early universe. And this creates a problem. Because according to our understanding, in this era the entire universe was filled with the processes of formation of stars and galaxies. And all the galaxies were newborns. But that's only half the problem. The James Webb Telescope also discovered a large number of faint, quiescent galaxies. And this discovery has two consequences. First, there are faint galaxies in the early universe. And old telescopes only saw bright galaxies. Moreover, in images from old telescopes, the greater the redshift, the greater the proportion of these bright active galaxies. In other words, a picture was emerging that confirmed that in the early universe all galaxies were bright and active, and then over time some gradually faded away. And this fit perfectly with the Big Bang Theory. But, it turns out that in the very early universe, when all the galaxies of the universe should have been shining and, in quotes, vigorously celebrating their birth, there is a very large proportion of galaxies that have long since stopped doing this. And this fact gives rise to a question. And how many other galaxies are there in the early universe that are also dim, but we do not see them due to the limited capabilities of our telescopes? And it is possible that the proportion of bright active galaxies in the early universe is the same as in the modern part of the universe closest to us. The second important implication is that in the early universe we see very massive galaxies that have long ceased star formation. For example, one of these galaxies is several times more massive than the Milky Way. But the formation of its stars occurred at a moment when, according to our models, the formation of a halo of dark matter should still be occurring. And this calls into question not only the age of our universe, but also our entire understanding associated with its appearance and evolution. Because if we summarize all the consequences of this discovery, we can assume that what we call the early universe is not such at all. In other words, we see no clear signs that the universe began exactly 14 billion years ago. Moreover, this discovery does not exclude the absence of evolution of the universe. Let me explain. It is possible that the proportion of bright and active galaxies in the so-called early universe is the same as in the modern universe. In addition, there are ultra-massive and low-mass galaxies both in the early universe and in the modern universe. There are other studies and discoveries that say the same thing. And we will talk about them in one of the following videos. In other words, there are several factors that indicate the absence or almost absence of evolution of the universe to which you can argue that the universe is expanding and the average density of matter is decreasing. But it seems that the amount of matter in the universe also increases over time, in proportion to the expansion of the universe, which even led researchers to assume that it seemed to be gradually coming from some external reservoir and replenishing the universe. 
and if you now have a lot of questions about the topic of this video, then the answers to these and many other questions are in videos number 8 and 10.